Okay, here we go. When you get into the Ballora Gallery, hold 1 and 0 for a minute and 20 seconds. This is the thing that blows my mind. How do you discover that? Yeah, right? How did you figure this out? You know, I'm just going to sit here and hold these two arbitrary keys for a minute and 20 seconds, and then I'm going to click this key again. How? Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where today it is our grand finale of the FNAF Iceberg. Matt! Did you ever think that this day could possibly come? I'm still not quite sure that it's here. <laughs> I don't have enough faith that we'll actually finish it, it, this. It's here. It's like when you're looking forward to Christmas, and Christmas never comes, and then Christmas finally comes, and you're like, oh, it's here! And if I breathe too heavily or if I touch it, it's just going to crumble away. I, I still feel like it's going to crumble away, so I don't I don't want to jinx us. Well, I, 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 it's not going to crumble away, man. It's here. How do you know that? I, I believe it. I believe! <laughs> Just like a Christmas is the spirit in your heart, Matt. <laughs> if you believe hard enough, it exists. It is the finale. After, after months... I'm, I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'll be here. It's fine. You're doing great. You're doing great, <laughs> Stephanie Standen. Uh, after months of waiting... Can you believe... That when you first, did you expect when you first picked this iceberg that this would go on this long? Uh, you know. Do you know how many months it's been that we've been covering this? <laughs> Sometimes you find lightning in a bottle. And that's exactly what this was. <laughs> yeah. You know? Lightning in a bottle, huh? Yes. This was before Security Breach came out, Matt. This was, like, prior to even teasers of Security Breach. This was supposed to be we our, were... like, warm-up for <laughs> Security... Oh, let's refresh ourselves on the lore of Five Nights Friends. This will be over in, like, three episodes, maybe. <laughs> Two. Tops. And then you picked this one. And then you found Natter John, and you picked this one. Thank you, Natter John. Yeah, yeah no, Natter John did a great job. Thank you. Very thorough. Yeah. Very thorough. Thank you. Uh, now, now we just need you to create one for Security Breach, so we have another year's worth of programming on this channel. <laughs> because let's face it, that is how long these things take us. Hey, in other news, other ex man, today is such an exciting day. Tom. Hi. Tom. Uh, <laughs> Hi. This is not Stephanie. Funnily enough, no. Strange. Although uh, Tom has a significant other named Stephanie. Yep. So that's a weird coincidence. Who, who knows? The world's weird. <laughs> it is. The only thing missing is if you were named Matt, and then it's like all these... All the Matts. I was going to say there's two Matts, two Stephs, and a Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I let the side down, guys. <laughs> two Matts, two Stephs. It sounds like a, like a sitcom. Like <laughs> two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. Like two Matts, two Stephs, and a Tom. <laughs> oh... It's like Friends. It's like a modern version of Friends. Yeah, there you uh -huh. go. Where all we do is talk about FNAF. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Just a bunch of friends hanging out in North Carolina talking about FNAF. And then, you know, we make a thousand episodes and everyone loves it. And then we, you know, license it out to Netflix and live cushy lives. I was racking my brain trying to make a two and a half men. <laughs> oh, two and a half. The closest, so I, got half? Was, the closest I got was two GT lives and a Tom. Mm, okay. Not great. Not great. Not my four, best. Four and a half. No. Four, no. It's, not, it's there. I see. I I, it's there. It's, it's two pair. You see what I'm. Yeah. yeah I, I get it. Yeah. Who's going to be the half, though? That's the question. Because mm. that's going to throw things. Two guys, two girls, and a Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> two. And three I'll, guys. No, three I'll guys, two girls, and a, and, a, and a Pikachu. And an even bigger Pikachu. <laughs> two guys, three girls. Three guys, two girls, a Pikachu, and a giant Pikachu. There it is. There we go. He, he the just, team's all here. He just sits. Also, so you guys know, like, when, when Pikachu isn't on camera, this can, is Pikachu. Let me turn the camera. Yeah, I was going to say, can you, can you yeah. turn the camera? Just to show what we, like, he just sits here and judges us. Like, he takes up an entire chair and just sits and judges us the entire time. <laughs> like, watching us. I moved him so he's kind of out of place, but they literally sit here like this. Day in and day out, and just observe us watching on head of, GT Live. Head of programming, everyone. It is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is our boss. <laughs> People choose on the payroll. Doesn't get paid a lot, but it's paid somewhat. Hey, uh, so for those of you who don't know or don't remember, this is Tom. Tom, you are. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Um, so I'm the creative director for Game Theory. Mm -hmm. So I am running scheduling and writing a lot of scripts and working with other writers to work on their scripts. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, and just kind of working with you to figure out what on earth we talk about. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, Tom made his first brave appearance uh, in the security breach talk back, where we kind of did the, the big theorist talk back. Tom is the only person uh, with as much knowledge in, in my like immediate circle that I talk to on a regular basis with, with uh, FNAF. I, I try to. I basically got your six years worth of knowledge downloaded into my brain in six weeks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, I shoved it in there. Just the amount of meetings and the amount of things to go, right, this is everything you need to know and crash course. On, and honestly, <laughs> like the streamlining is probably helpful because I got a lot of garbage in there that's been like retconned or thrown away or whatever. You got yeah. just like, here's the greatest hits compilation. It's Absolutely. Awesome. This is what Security Breach is telling us and the, also, the main thing. <laughs> also, uh, I learned today that uh, Tom does the exact same thing that I do with our respective Stephanies, which is, you know, when we're struggling with a script or dealing with an idea, you walk around the block with them and you just talk at them about animatronic murder. Because that's, you know, that's what a quality relationship is in 2022. Yeah, I'm not sure it's quite what my Stephanie ever anticipated was going to be in you our know, lives. I, you know, I, I, would, I would hazard to say that I don't think uh, my Stephanie has expected that either. No, but I used to work for Disney, so this is quite an opposite direction to go. <laughs> just, just wait, Disney at some point will own Five Nights at Freddy's. Disney owns every property, Disney will own Five Nights when, at Freddy's. When is it coming to the theme park? Disney is the thing that started it all, yeah. right? We're, as we're looking at this iceberg about how deep it goes like animatronics started like i mean when you think about animatronics you think about like disney animatronics and like yeah. the hall of presidents and hey yeah you know and that's so true they started it chuck e cheese continued it and five nights at freddy's inherited it exactly so it just needs to come full circle and we need a halloween night at disney yes snap that's what we need <laughs> at, at disney with foxy running down like main street yeah there was like, there swiggity, 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 i'm there for the booty there was a tweet that went out it was a joke tweet and i was very disappointed yeah. that there's um a place in England called Alton Towers, which is another theme park place, oh. and they were they joked about a Halloween FNAF crossover. Yeah, and me and Dorco were just freaking out. And we were like, yes, this, and, and it wasn't true, and it was very disheartening. <laughs> what what is Af what is Afton Towers normally? Oh, Al Alton Towers. Alton. Oh, Alton. Sorry, oh, not Afton oh, Towers. No, that would have been a brilliant crossover. That would have been, been no brainer. I'm like, oh, it's a purple tower. It's, it's just All the employees are security guards. It's basically just a theme park, um, hey. just normally, and but they but. Alton Towers and a lot of the other ones they know, like Chessington and Thorpe Park, yeah. they um they always do stuff on Halloween. So yeah. um, Thorpe Park particularly does a lot of Walking Dead crossover mm -hmm. around yeah. that time of year, and they have Fright Nights when they open late, and it's all spooky, yeah. and you know you can get grabbed by zombies and all that sort of jazz. So it makes sense as a crossover to just yeah. go, well, just make it FNAF, right. but they just no right. one no one's pulled the trigger. Well, one of these days, someone's going to pull the trigger, and they're going to just crush. Yeah, and everyone will descend upon and be like, I'm going to get killed by an animatronic. Yay! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of weird crossovers, uh, and this isn't on an iceberg, but it should be on an iceberg. Whoever, Nat or John, when you make version 15 <laughs> of your very elaborate iceberg, now that we've finished it so we can revisit it, uh, someone needs to include the Skittles. Uh, crossover that's been happening lately? Skittles crossover. Do you not know this? I have not. You're paid what? to know this stuff. <laughs> I've been Be my a, brain with I'm me. I'm in a new country. There's lots of things to take in at once. I, know. <laughs> I understand. Uh, no, it, well, also it, it, it exists online. You don't need to be in the U.S. to understand this one. That's true. Uh, Matt, do you know this? <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> what, what am I even asking? Oh, yeah, what, the, what, have I learned nothing in the last five months of doing these episodes? <laughs> no, yeah. Matt, you know about the Skittles crossover with the FNAF, FNAF right? Skittles collab? Yeah, the FNAF Skittles I didn't know collab. that exists. Yeah, so it doesn't. Um, <laughs> oh, so it's another one of these. No, no, no. It's For whatever reason, I don't know. The, the social media manager of the Skittles Twitter account <laughs> loves FNAF or at, G at least gets it. And so... They have been making repeated references to Five Nights at Freddy's, Mike Afton, stuff like that. And so, all of a sudden, Skittles... Yes, no, I have seen this. I didn't realize it was Skittles, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I don't uh -huh. think I Because it was just, like, random things. But yes, yeah. no, I have seen those. Yeah. weird. Yeah, it's very strange. And it comes out of nowhere. But, like, those tweets crush because it's like the internet's like, Oh, it's talking about Skittles. This brand is talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. How weird is that? Maybe they're gunning for that FNAF movie product placement. Oh, absolutely. They're going, come on. We'll, we will be the, the candy of I, choice. I can already see the scene now. You have, like, a little little kid, like, munching his Skittles, yep. walking down the hall 
hallway after hours at Five Nights at Fre- or at, at Freddy Fazbear's, and then like boom, he's grabbed. There you go. Or like, Done. or like maybe. And the skittles then roll out across the yeah. floor, and uh-huh. that's like all that's left of him. Kind of it's, it's like Reese's Pieces back in the day with uh, <laughs> E. T. That was like yes. the thing that made made Reese's Pieces. It was supposed to be M and M's. I think like mm. they went out to M and M's first, and M and M's I think declined. And Reese's Pieces are like, yes! And that put Reese's Pieces on the map, and the rest was history. There you go. Uh, or the other alternative, which I don't think Skittles would love, is if you if Springtrap, uh, William Afton <laughs> left <laughs> like a little trail. trail of Skittles to the back room, and oh. the kid's like, mm, let me eat that. And they're like, ah, get them. Oh. Probably, no. probably not. That's as a little bit less brand friendly. <laughs> I mean, it's a movie about murdered children and animal killer animatronics, so, you know, you take a risk. <laughs> you, you do take a risk, and yet people seem not to, for whatever reason, FNAF just exists in this gray area, but people are like, we're just going to let it slide. Yeah. We're just going to, I talk was, about this. It's because it was the first. It was the, it was. I, I guess, or people, like, don't pay enough attention, you All know, like, where, like, parents don't pay enough attention to, like, the media that kids consume, where they're like, ah, whatever. It's, it, oh, Five Nights at Freddy's, that sounds fun and interesting. About yeah. pizzerias, sure, why not? Deep lore. <laughs> See, that's where you got to research the deep lore. Like you were telling oh. me, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol's got and, some stuff. And maybe there's death and murder and destruction in Paw Patrol. No one cares because they're like, oh, it's just Paw Patrol. Paw but Paw once Patrol. you start digging in between, you start to find the cracks. I mean, you know, no, nothing is safe, let's be honest. No. Like, I, you know, my first theory was Winnie the Pooh is going to die a diabetic. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was your first theory. That, that was, was my cool. first theory. Oh, that was and that was, and you just go, yeah, not even Winnie the Pooh, the most no. classic of, oh, no. of children's well, TV well, shows. Well, you say, you say that, but there are so many Winnie the Pooh theories out oh, there, there, like are. as far as like... Oh, Winnie, and, and Seven Deadly it, Sins. Seven Deadly Sins is a um, classic, but, but even, um, even some of it isn't e- like... Some of the theories aren't even really theories because A.A. A. Milne was using mm. them as a means of kind of expressing his post-war... Because yeah. if I remember right, he was a soldier. And yeah, he was, yeah, PTSD did yeah, really badly. Yeah. And so he was using writing that and the characters as a way of like dealing with kind of the, the mental torment and the PTSD and, and the, mm. you know, just coming back into the civilization. He was using it as an outlet yeah. for that. So the idea of like... Uh, Eeyore is depression and Piglet is anxiety and like yeah. all these all these kind of symptoms and uh, you know uh, th- not illnesses or side effects of having PTSD and stuff was being expressed through this mm. in the guise of the children like that's not even a theory I think that's like I thought about doing that one but I'm like this actually feels yeah. well enough substantiated that I can't even do yeah. a theory about it because it's a thing. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, we, we made reference to it in yeah. the theory. We talked about, oh, there's all these things about the seven deadly sins yep. or about um, different medical sort of disorders and things like that. And it's that sense of, um, like, people going, oh, it's a way for kids to express themselves. Like, yes, it is. Yeah. But actually, yeah. like you say, the actual purpose is just mm-hmm. he needed to cope. And yeah. that was how he... Well, and I think and I think a lot of it, that a lot of that makes kids media much more real and much Mm. more well-rounded like i I think that's one of the reasons why a winnie the pooh or you know a a five nights at freddy's or like a like when you have characters that aren't just like ah happy go lucky like there's there's some element of like real emotion and like well-roundedness infused into that story and into that narrative it becomes so much deeper and so much more valuable as a result and is Absolutely. able to persist a lot, a lot better than just something that's just made us very like, I'm making this to be scary. I'm making this to be happy. I'm making this for whatever. Yes. I have something that I'm express Whether I, I as the author understand it or not, I am infusing a part of myself into this mm. as though I am infusing remnant into an animatronic endoskeleton to give it life. And there's the full circle. And there it is. <laughs> Speaking of toy bears, we've got the bot. If we're going to finish this iceberg we gotta do it it. there's a lot of things down here at the bottom uh matt hey (laughs) where should we start like i get to pick you do um what what are you most excited to learn about today what's the ice cave well wait no wait no (laughs) so many options so many (laughs) who is who's jason is is hashtag our, blame Jason. Is that yeah. our Jason? Yeah. It's our Jason. It is our Jason. He, is, he made the iceberg. He, he made the iceberg. <laughs> he's deep how, cut. I was going to say, how do you feel that he's lower down on it than you are? <laughs> I, I mean, you know. Uh, the, I'm just proud that he made it there. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag blame Jason. Um, no, I don't think that's a reference to Jason, our Jason, uh, our, our head of production. Um, no, if I recall. Okay. Jason is. 
Well, why am I talking? You're the you're the guy here. <laughs> He's a character in the novels. Yes, I he is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Again, good re- one. Re- okay, re- thank you. Well re- done. Re- retention of all this information of a very short period of time, and that's about as much as my brain can handle right Perfect. now. <laughs> that's, you, you know what? That's about all your brain needs to handle right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> If I remember correctly, uh, Jason, it's very, he's a, he's a very strange character uh, because, again, we'll, we'll look it up to confirm this. Uh, here, while I talk. We'll yep, I, will, I will get it. Um, as I recall, he only appears in the first novel, uh, which is very strange because pretty much every other character recurs, but it's a younger character. Uh, one of the older characters, okay. I think Marla, well has to supervise. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Uh, Jason is uh, the younger brother of Marla, right? So the entire time, she's kind of, like, supervising him uh, throughout the events of the series. Uh, But he only appears in the first book. And then, even though Marla comes back and all these other characters come back in subsequent installments of the Silver Eyes or of uh, uh, the the Fazbear novels, uh, he never comes back. And it's just really random. I don't know if it was too many characters, if they didn't like him, uh, but... And he's he just he's the one who's there, I think when someone gets kidnapped, Carlton gets kidnapped. And he he's not all that important, clearly because he doesn't come back. But it's it's very random. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't thought about the like deeper lore of the first FNAF book in a while. Yeah. Jason goes back to the pizzeria the day after the attempt to save Carlton. Yeah. He, he's like the younger kid that kind of gets in trouble. He escapes. The end. Golden Freddy appears and instantly steps in, which I was harming him. Jason yeah. is, yeah, there it is. Jason is entirely absent from Twisted Ones and Fourth Closet. It makes him a single appearance character, which is very strange. That's it. He is. He's the only one who witnessed Carlton's kidnapping. There we go. That's it. Yeah, so um, Jason is the only one in the group who the animatronics don't turn on. This is because he's a kid. Yeah, uh, that was always, I, I, it's, it's funny that they call that out. I always assumed that that was because he's a kid, whereas everyone else is kind of like late teenager stage mm. or maybe like older um, you know, and so maybe they're perceived as, as parents or whatever. But yeah, so so anyway, that's Jason. Hashtag blame Jason. He's there. Carlton gets kidnapped. It's his fault. Uh, so yeah, take your pick about Jason. There you go. Uh, here, my turn to pick. I'm going with... Here, actually, I can do this one. Uh, 1993 Aurora shooting. I don't want to dwell on this one too much. Uh, this was our very first FNAF theory, actually. Um, this is a reference to... Uh, the the very first game theory, I, everyone wanted me to do a theory on yes. Five Nights at Freddy's. I had sent out the tweet uh, where I'm like, hey, do you want me to cover, cover Slender Man or this new game that people seem to be into, Five Nights at Freddy's? Mm-hmm. And overwhelmingly, people said Five Nights at Freddy's, and I'm like, I haven't heard too much about this series. Like, Markiplier had just played it, mm. and I'm like, okay, let me look into it. And I'm like, oh, this is very popular, and wow, look at this. But... I couldn't really figure out what to say about it at the time. Like, there was hints at a story, and I guess looking at it now... I mean, back in the day, it was the, the channels were less lore-centric, less prediction-heavy, yeah. right? This is where we started to look into, like, oh, critical thinking about lore or, like, deep insight into lore is really something that we can really dig into, and that's a fun way of kind of expanding what game theory represents. Um, but at the time, I'm like, well, what what is a real-life thing that I could relate this to? And I did a bunch of searching for animatronic pizza restaurants and the science of animatronics and, you know, real-life crimes that had happened. And I found this one that happened at a Chuck E. Cheese in 1993 and where, I mean, it's a tragic, it's an awful, awful story where someone comes in and just, you know, uh, kills a, a huge number of people. Um, and a lot of the similarities between that story and the Five Nights at Freddy's events that happen, Mm. right? Like the the number of people who who die, uh, locations where murders happen, uh, and even the date, the 1993 date, matches up with kind of the paycheck that you walk away with at the end. Really lined up in a lot of ways where I'm like, this is very compelling, you know, it's educating people about this this event, and who knows, maybe this is something that inspired this creator, who, again, like, at the time, like, I didn't know much about Scott, I, Scott Coffin, who cares, like, this guy, it's just this game. Um, you no, know, did you know? The, <laughs> li- right? Little, little did I suspect, uh, and obviously over the years, like, that was decidedly not what happened, but it is this weird parallel to the events of the game mm. where... You know, you have this tragedy and the number of bodies and this is like, it's just very, very odd. Um, 
But yeah, that is a reference to the very first uh, FNAF theory, and, and from there it kind of took off. And then FNAF 2 rolled around, and then it, it you really started to see Scott lean into his own lore, really build out the characters and things like that, and lean into who's purple guy, you know, yeah. it, what's he holding, what's the phone guy, all that stuff. So FNAF 2 is where theorizing about FNAF lore in earnest happened. FNAF 1 was, let's parallel these two stories and then take it from there. So that was my choice. Tom, go for it. Oh, uh, let <clears throat> us go for... Let's go for German Fun Time Freddy. Oh, that's that's one. Okay, so that's another one. <laughs> that's that's another, another one that I can do. Um, I, I know that one. So, uh, German Fun Time Freddy, I... <laughs> I think. Don't misquote me on this one. So back around the days of Sister Location, uh, we had Kellen, Kellen, uh, who is the voice of Funtime Freddy. He's the mm -hmm. voice of uh, a lot of different characters at this point. Um, but specifically, Funtime Freddy uh, was where he got to start. Um, German Funtime Freddy. He came onto GT Live. He was sitting right where you were. It was a very different era of GT Live. <laughs> uh, Steph, Steph was also here. And he came on to tell stories about, you know, what it is to be a voice actor, what it is to mm -hmm. voice these characters. And I think the story went... If I remember right, I think the story went that he initially, like when he submitted his audition or like he initially imagined Freddy to be more German, like <laughs> to, to pitch him as a more German version of the character. It's a choice. It, I mean, it's a choice. He's <laughs> kind of Germanic, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I could see him carrying a, a beer stein. And <laughs> cheers, there's, everyone. There's definitely fan art of that somewhere. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure out of... But then he did it on the live stream. He did the voice. And I, I forget if we asked him to re-record it or or what. But then I think we used it in a game theory as well. Sure. It was like a cold open at, at some point. Um, but he's super, super talented. Okay, so these are going to be the voices here. But but he <laughs> recorded some of the lines in German, in right. his kind of like German accent. Well, yeah, there you go. There's the visual you wanted. Yeah, this Holding is it. Holding a stein. <laughs> Oh, 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 hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. Come closer. I'll sing a song for you. I think, actually, no. I think he, he didn't do it live. He, I believe he brought in the, again, this is deep brain. I don't crystallize memories anymore. I don't, I, in order, you have to get sleep to have memories, and I don't get sleep. Uh, I, I forget everything that happens. It's like a sieve. It's a good thing that camera phones exist so I can, like, take photographs of what I did. Uh, like, memento. Like, wait, <laughs> let me tattoo my body with the things I need to remember. Kellen Goff came on <laughs> and revealed German Funtime Freddy clips. I think he came on and he had some of these, like, unused clips. Sure. And he kind of premiered them on the stream. But anyway, long story short, it is Kellen doing that uh, in his it's, original interpretation of Funtime Freddy. It's terrifying. It's, it's great. I mean, you know... <laughs> I think, you know, after Security Breach, everyone's wondering, like, where does it head to next? This could be it. International <laughs> expansion. <laughs> That's true. You know, let me pull a Markiplier and predict the future of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> let me speak it into being, because I spoke, you know, uh, Felix the Shark into being. I'm going to speak this one into being. We've had Sister Location. We've had Security Breach in a mall. International waters. International. Oh, here's a, oh, you just have one where each character's from a different place. Oh! So who, who would be from where? That's oh, the that's great. So you've got German Freddy, obviously. Uh, Chica. Ooh. Ooh. Where's, <laughs> Suddenly, where's in you? Where, where, where else Chica, is there? <laughs> Chica could be from a lot of different places, let's be honest. I mean, we've already got Jap. Did, did we lose Tom's yeah. mic? We Ooh. did. Just, uh, Oh, <coughs> Sorry. I mean, this is Stephanie's seat and she never put a mic on, so this is like... It's, ah, it's well done! Well referenced! <laughs> well referenced! <laughs> a plus. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> You're just following in the foot. Maybe it's the seat. Maybe it had it nothing might be. to do with Stephanie. <laughs> Maybe it was the seat the whole time. Yeah, okay, so where's um, Chica from? I could see Chica coming from anywhere. I mean, we have obviously got a school time Chica. That is a classic... The, the, the manga. The, I, yeah, the I was anime. gonna say, a lot of the versions of Chica, like, especially Toy Chica, I feel like are coming from, like, Japan. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> feel I, I feel like Akihabara has, like, a back room in a comic shop somewhere, and there is Toy Chica in her, like, yep. school outfit, FNAF 6. You're like, okay, I believe that. Yeah. Not, you know what? I'm not surprised. There you go. Oh. I mean, to be fair, you think like even like you go, they've got Pirate Foxy, but like pirates are from everywhere. So yeah, you pirates. Could are you could easily just right. Like... Remember, so when I think, let's see, when I think Bonnie, I don't know why I think Bonnie, but I think of him as like 
Nordic. Interesting. I don't know why. <laughs> See, I was going to go with British punk rocker. Ooh! Oh, because of the, the guitar, the, 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 guitar the, the guitar and the guitar. bass, and yeah, and obviously just some of the fun hairstyle okay, choices but European, I've seen. Generally European. European yes, we're agreeing that. on that. Absolutely. And then, yeah, Fo where's Foxy the pirate from? He's from the, the open sea. Yeah, exactly. He's, the he's from no nowhere. <laughs> Foxy of the Caribbean. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Um, I think that Monty is like Slavic. Monty. Ooh, Monty's Slavic. Nice. Yeah. I Monty's see. got like the like the short mullet. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I totally like, see very European European haircut. With a mullet. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. He has that, that again, like the glam rock, like over the top look. Too. Yeah. Exactly. That's a, that's a good one. Thank you. And then also uh, Roxy. Then. Oh yeah. Mm. So many. So many animals. We could be here for days just mm. listing all also, animatronics. Also, also from... Withered Bonnie. Withered, like withered Bonnie. Part. Roxy is like from Bushwick. Let's push. <laughs> <laughs> also, lest we forget Music Man. No, we, we, of course. We, we shan't forget Music Man. Shan't forget him. <laughs> where would he Gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> where, where is the, where <laughs> mu Music Man comes from nowhere. He, no. he, he comes from uh, the hollow earth. Yeah. He, he just, he <laughs> he just, just, just sends from the hollow earth. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, we don't know where those tubes lead. <laughs> no. Like, he no, just he's just crawling out of the gutters. From the You're like, oh, there he is. That's him. There you go. I see him hanging out with, like, Pennywise, the clown <laughs> in the sewers. Like, oh, okay. I'm not yeah. surprised by this. No. Uh -huh. Not at all. <laughs> But yeah, international expansion. We're calling it right now. That's what we need. That would be great, actually. I would love. I would love to see like a, a, a like a cyberpunk Japanese arcade style. Yes. Because because the mall insecurity breach is very much steeped in like American culture, yes. especially like '80s American culture. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of doing like a more high tech, modern, international arcade place, you know, with with much more streamlined and slick animatronics. Yes. Like, that would be so cool. Yes. Because they're still be. very bulky. They're very big. They're very heavy. Yes. But seeing, like, some, like, you know, modern tech where it's all been streamlined out yeah. a little, that'd be a cool. Little bit, a little bit smoother motion, which yeah. is, like, because they're still quite, even the ones that are humanoid are yeah. still a little bit clunky. So yeah. to have them be that kind of... Especially as they're pushing it more and more into the future. Yeah. Like, I think that there's still... Here's the thing. I still think that there's a lot of stories to tell with the original animatronics and, like, in the early days and, like, with them being creepy and herky Like, mm. that's, to me, still the best version of these characters. But if they are pushing into this, like, well, where do we go next? Where do, how do we continue out the timeline mm. this way? Yeah. That's where I'd love to see it go. Absolutely. Or Freddy's... Freddy's International is really exciting because you can do it in some cool stuff you could yeah you've got comic comic value you've got right yeah there's got there's scary stuff there's a lot of value well, there because every culture has its horrifying exactly sort of like myths and mm -hmm. and culture that you could easily just jump into yeah so easy well and also at this point freddy's has been established as such a huge franchise in the u.s you know yes. like where it closed down for a while but now it's everywhere and look at how big it is and look at how successful it is in the books especially Fazbear Frights yeah. like it is everywhere in the oh, US every character interacts it interacts yeah. with it in some way in some so way it, so it's got to be a big franchise and it just never dies regardless of how many kids die <laughs> right no right yeah <laughs> so... <laughs> unlike the children of Freddy's never dies yes uh, and so at this point like the only way to go is like once you've gotten so big in the US it only makes sense for it to then expand outward I... great we did it congratulations guys Nice. We made the next FNAF game. So, so you're, you're pitching, essentially, if FNAF were Epcot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Epcot FNAF. Yeah, that is what we want. <laughs> Get into a giant, weird globe. You know, future globe. That hop in of, your little dark ride tram. As far as, like, like from a World's Fair yeah. sort of animatronic mm. standpoint. I mean, yeah, it each, works. One, each, each animatronic has their own... Well, like in Security Breach, they have their own zone, yeah. but it's a different location, yeah, different country, a different maybe. country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That would be terrifying. I love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have, we got to finish this, we and we're talking a lot. <laughs> we just don't uh, want it to end. This no. is one of those times where we're stalling because we just don't want it to end. Um, it's given us so much joy so far. <laughs> uh, lost... Uh, yeah, lost uh, what do I know about... I, okay, here. Uh, of these, Golden Freddy on Night 2 of FNAF 2. Okay, sure. Uh, numbers. Well, that is generic. Uh, impossible good ending in FNAF 3 and Nintendo Switch. I'm assuming... I'm assuming that... I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that this is... Hey, FNAF 3 had a lot of weird glitch. Like, you had to do a lot of weird things in order to get the happiest day ending on... The good ending on FNAF 3, right? You mm. had to type in the code on the wall and the tiles. You had to click on weird cupcakes and stuff. So I could see the console ports being pretty janky. Mm. Like, 
you know. Well, they had it with um, Doki Doki, didn't they? When they ported yeah. it, they had to change how everything worked right. in order to do the file swapping and file movement and deletion and stuff. Yep, it, that's exactly you can't it. can't do it on a console. Yep, exactly. So it'd be along those lines. I would agree 100%. A passable good ending FNAF 3 Switch. There you there go. go. Um, FNAF 3 on Switch is broken. It's currently... <laughs> yep, there <laughs> it is. There you go. The top one. <clears throat> there you go. FNAF 3 on Nintendo Switch broke. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was just like, okay. we're just looking at the loading screen. <laughs> it, it just will not... It's impossible to get anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's impossible to get the good ending. Okay, third night. I'm assuming he can't touch something. Right. Although, how would we know? I, right, I was gonna There's say. no like mouse or cursor or screen, so how do we know if he's trying? This proves that it's impossible. Well, oh, then, then they got there. Of course, they got to. Oh, it's glitched out. Oh. Oh, they got there. Oh, they got there, but it's. Oh, they can't move to the right. Weird. That you would feel like should be doable. Oh, oh, like, look. oh make it. So they, they, they can kind of move, but not. All Interesting. Right. So there you go. It was. We have touch controls of it. We have touch controls of it works. That does work. Okay, so touch controls. So, okay, so Switch has a touch screen, doesn't it? But it's like intermittent what games use it. Yeah. So whether that was built in as a feature, you have to use the touch screen. Huh. Or whether. Right? I don't know. Who knows? And I always wonder that about some of these games that are built for like PC first or like mouse mm. and keyboard first because the console ports, like you said with Doki Doki, like the yeah. Doki Doki did it in a smart way where you have to dig through the files yeah. in this like meta wrapper that was created for the yeah. new console ports. That's smart. But yeah, if you're just kind of pumping these things out fast, it becomes kind of janky. Yeah. So I wouldn't <laughs> games be Games that we're not built for it. Well, and also because at this point, FNAF is on. More than just Switch, isn't it? It's on play. It must be. It's on PlayStation, I think. Right, and you can't touch PlayStation. No, I don't know if it's on Xbox, but that's because, but that's just because security breach has taken a while to get on there. So I don't right. know if there's an issue there in general. Right. So if that's the case, like controller, you're having to like scroll over. Mm. Th that's weird. That's weird. Although PlayStation does have the little touch sensor on the top. It does have it? the touch sensor on the controller, but again, like. But that would be that would be janky as hell, though. It, it seems <laughs> odd. It seems odd. Okay, uh, Matt, pick one. You got it. I like... What do you uh, like? Well, let's go to Ice Cave. Ice Cave. Yeah. I have no clue. Okay, <laughs> cool. Tom. <laughs> no clue. Has there been an Ice Cave in the game or the books? <laughs> uh, ice Cave. Uh, FNAF. Oh, okay. Uh, FNAF no, World. I was going to say, the only time that there's been like a snow level is in FNAF World, I do know. Ice Caves is a possible location. But you see, if we had Freddy's International, then there could be yeah! an Icelandic area. Right? <laughs> there we go. And this... <laughs> okay, Ice Caves is a possible location in FNAF World. Not much is known about the location except the possibility that it FNAF World will be updated. <laughs> <laughs> there. Man. Oh, Pretty love it. Why is Baldy hanging? What is Baldy doing over here? A, more, a weird Morty. Oh. oh, 3,000 games to play for free. I don't believe you. I, I, <laughs> Somehow. I, I, think, I, I don't trust you. Uh, sidebar advertisement. Uh, so it might have been... Okay, here's oh. Ice Cave. It's a music track. Okay, so I'm assuming this is a cut music track. Ice Cave is an unused track that appears... Oh, my gosh. That <laughs> I swear we have an ad blocker now. Do we really? Yes. Man, this, this is with the ad. Is it on? It should be. Is it on? <laughs> Jeez. Ice Cave is an unused track that appeared on FNAF World, uh, but it was never used in the game. The reason for its uh, removal is unknown, probably because there's no... Uh, you do go into caves in FNAF World, and, and I think you go into a cave through the... So there's the like snowy mountain area yeah. in FNAF World. You fight like Brow Boy, I think, over there as well. <laughs> whatever random characters are over there um they don't call it there's also a wolf over there that was always really weird for everyone which might have informed like twisted the twisted one's wolf as well as maybe right. roxy wolf but there's a wolf in fnaf world in the the snowy level which uh, uh, now that they say it i remember it's just the dusting field sure um here let's listen to this bop that is a nice track I love how we've all just generally agreed what ice themes in video it's games like, yeah, sound like. crystalline sort of like... Like, like marimba or... Uh, what is it? No, like, yeah, it's xylophone. Like xylophone kind of sounding. Right? It's so funny how musically we just like all 
associate certain instruments and certain tones mm. and like vibes with like, oh yeah, this is ice cave. You don't hear so, the hard rock ice cave song. Like, <laughs> no, <"Ray!" laughs> you really don't. No, no. You think about you think about desert levels. Have always got like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, like that was that was some weird combination. That was that, that sounded like Pokemon to me for uh, some weird reason. It's, it started as. Um, <laughs> Uh, Banjo Kazooie, I think. Uh, yeah, and that's country music. There you go. Well, You're in, the, in the country. I've got a little twang. I can't. I can't. Twang. I can't really recreate my sitar. <laughs> so, forgive me for not beatboxing a proper sitar <laughs> for my Middle Eastern like desert music or whatever. I think Ice we Cave can let it go. Is the only currently known music that was removed from FNAF World. All right. But if we have FNAF International, then we there can is. bring it back. Going to Icelandic caves. There you go. Bringing it back, Tom. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm intrigued by it. what is Orange Spring Trap Mystery Mini. Mystery Minis were a toy, weren't they? Yeah. Yes. A toy set. I'm assuming this is a janky toy. Orange Spring Trap Mystery. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Here, Orange Spring Trap Mystery. There. Is it? Is that spring trap? <laughs> I, is that, like, let's yeah. ignore the fact, is that orange? Yes, it's clearly orange. Is that spring trap? <laughs> this, this is canon. This is, this, is, this is a canon character right here. Orange spring trap mystery mini here. Okay, mystery minis. Oh, yeah. This And this goes back to what we talked about last time. Uh, you weren't here, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, but last time we talked about distorted plushies, where uh, yeah. in the early days of FNAF, there was a, a severe quality control issue yeah. with the quality of the things and uh here we go when series one was shown off at a toy fair in 2016 a prototype of the spring trap mystery mini was shown with an orange body complete with other details <laughs> ah good, <I'm> good. <laughs> orange but there was other stuff on it too sure okay. the orange thing is the main important point yeah here. despite being okay here we go so Oh, so this is yeah, so this these, is the actual the, version. These are the prototypes. And then this is something else. This is something else. But this is what he originally looked like. Yeah, that's it was definitely orange with yellow like patches. That's interesting. That's real weird. That's that feels yeah that feels strange. Like a strange mistake, either a mistake to make or a strange choice. I mean, all look at look at Angry Bonnie. All <laughs> like yeah, they all look inter They're all interesting. Clearly, Springtrap is a huge swing and a miss. You know, just yeah. w swung for the fences and whipped. Yeah. But I, 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 I understand. So, <laughs> I wonder if Scott has ever kicked himself for Springtrap's design because. Oh, really? I, I, because it's it's a complicated design. It's hard, and right? It's kept changing a lot as well. And it changes thing. a lot, but anytime you're sh trying to show something that has like holes and patches mm -hmm. and different textures that are kind of like popping out all over them, like we learn about this when we do merch, right? Yeah. Where for every other added element or color hit or you know, you're printing on a different part of a, a jacket or you're doing a different fabric. All of that adds incremental car cost and, and a lot of complexity yes. to the final thing that you're creating. There's a lot more hurdles to jump over. We, with the ARG jacket that oh, we yeah. that we launched uh, a month ago or whatever, um, that was so complicated and we had to find the right provider for it and the right person to make it because we were asking them to print in all these different areas and like put patches and sewing in all these weird areas where they're like most manufacturers like we, we don't do like we don't do we, that, we, no. you want it on the front great what maybe back? we could get right. you on the arm you know like if you stretch yeah. it but we're like oh yeah can you do like inside over here or like underneath here and and they were like oh okay sure um <laughs> so I see spring traps design. And I'm like, no wonder everyone has such trouble recreating yes. him because first off, the color shouldn't be an issue. Like that, that feels yeah. You know that's 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 not okay. But like all the rips and tears mm. and, and wires and bones and whatever, like over the years as his design has evolved, spring trap is always the weakest designed when it comes to merch and that's the reason why is because yeah. it's just so complicated do you think that's why then they've gone for bird trap where he is basically an animatronic at this point with a couple of sm like his feet one of his feet and it, he's got like just a bit on the head yeah so I, it takes that element out of it yeah I, I think yeah as you see him becoming more and more endo you know and more and more like or less fusion of different body parts. Like, yes. the leg is just an animatronic leg. The arm is, like, half and half. Like, mm. there's less mixing of, yeah. you know, whole plus... Metal over, plus, yeah, plus bone. Yeah, exactly. Plus. The more complicated it gets, the harder it is to produce, 
also the worse it looks to produce in a lot of like yeah. we find ourselves again in merch and, and just being from a merch design standpoint because i've learned yeah. a lot over the years of doing merch is sometimes you have to simple like you want it to be really detailed and whatever but you yeah. simplify it because when you get the detailed stuff back it looks bad because mm -hmm. machines are only able to like so so precisely yeah. or print so precisely before ink leads. a narrow margin of what that's exactly it yeah and so it's one of those things but that by simplifying you get better results of the stuff that you've made and it looks cleaner. And so I think that over the years, as Spring Trap has evolved, that simplification process might be tied to some element of the merchant duplication process yeah. as well. Angry Bonnie, though, is a mood. <laughs> like, That's this a mood. is a mood here. That chica in the back is, is giving some kind of vibe. She's, uh, she's, giving, <laughs> she's giving that uh, Akihabara backrooms <laughs> vibe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that endo, like, Metal Freddy in the front? Uh, endo. What is that? What? His, his what eyes are that? going in different directions. <laughs> what, what is that? that? What is that? I mean, these are all... Is that a character? These are choices. I mean, with FNAF AR, like, anything's a character. I mean, FNAF point. AR, it's like... You saw it when we, 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 we made a mud puddle into a skin for Freddy. It was when, when Jacksepticeye did the Smash or Pass. Oh, the Smash or Pass, and there was like a hundred of them. I was just like suddenly going, and we're done. Oh, no. Oh, it keeps going. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> you haven't gotten into the chocolate dipped animatronics. <laughs> You know, oh, the scary carnival clown animatronics. It's like, Just, okay. Oh, goodness. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. This is, this is, I'm going to, like, print. I don't print... understand here where he's, I, I get I... Bonnie. Right. Like normal Bonnie. And then this Chica. That's probably Toy Chica in the back. You've got Freddy. You've got Toy Right. Freddy. What is the difference is, here? Is that meant to be Toy Bonnie? Like, what Bonnie is that purple? This must be original Bonnie and this is Toy Bonnie? Hasn't got the cheeks, Okay, because I was... Confused because the blue one in the front is also Bonnie, no? Oh, that's yes. Toy Bonnie in the front, right? Oh, front. this. Oh, yeah, this is Toy. Okay, this is Toy it's Bonnie. Got the cheeks, right? Why are there three versions? Is it Shadow Bonnie? Yeah, maybe that's it. Like I, I guess like, the, the Shadow Bonnie <laughs> it's a from good question, the um, actually. from the mini games, right? I'm like, oh yeah, that must be. Yeah, that's weird. And he, he's very angry, so I mean, like, I'm an angry shadow <laughs> creature. <laughs> exactly. I have feelings. <laughs> Yeah. I take issue with being murdered. Jelly. Only one Foxy, though. Only one Foxy. Foxy isn't getting any love. No, no, no love. Mangle, no. Right, Rock. Withered Foxy, man. Missed no, opportunity exactly. there. Exactly. Or, so there you go. Collect. Balloon Boy got it. Why did he get it? Right, collect, <laughs> collect your limited edition uh, orange Foxy toy. That's going to be worth something. Make an NFT of that one. <laughs> there it is. Uh, oh, oh NFTs. Okay. There you go. Next up, uh, so that's Orange Mystery. Numbers Easter. I don't know what Numbers Easter Egg is. I, FNAF, Numbers. It's so vague. Easter Egg. Oh. In the background of the game, you can hear a slowed down. Wait. Hold up. Wait, what? What? 15. Oh, this is, this is a different one. 1578, but it. Oh, I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, but they even just had the number. Come here. up for a different one. Right. Okay, here. Let's start with this one. In the background of the game, so this is sister location. Mm -hmm. In the background of sister location, you can hear a slowed down version of Baby saying the numbers 1, 5, 7, 8 in a random order? It's unknown what this means to the lore currently. The most notice noticeably plays in circus control with online. Okay. What? Um, was that one? Is it? Well, let's have a listen to what? five. Was that one? Yeah, let's okay. have a listen to the rest and see whether. I that. think that was just like baby burping. And like, <laughs> it's meant to be slowed down, so I do wonder if you were to put them up to normal speed, whether you. Would... Whether... I'm not hearing any sort of five here. Yeah, there's no V, is there, on that one? F to five. <laughs> I, it's got the pattern. It's got the pattern. And again, like, because if you if you were to speed it up, I wonder whether it would yeah. sound. Because. Yeah, I can. Maybe. Here, let's see. That was hard because that's one syllable. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, um, it was like you had the other, on, on one of the other ones you did of this, mm -hmm. where you had, um, oh, if you play this backwards, it says like, yeah, it all this says stuff, and it's like, it, it, but if you, and if you have subtitles, then you right. suddenly go, oh, I now hear it. Yeah. But without it. Yeah, some of the audio clues that people discover exist, other ones <laughs> don't, you know, and, or other, not don't, are open to interpretation. Like when we read the mini, the mini arenas and whether they spell the word baby. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and it's London like. London Bridge falling 
in okay, your yeah, yeah, or London, London Bridge falling down. Mm-hmm. That for years apparently is uh, good children kill their parents or whatever. <laughs> Scott's whatever. been playing the long game. <laughs> <laughs> it's been passed down generation to generation. I mean, going, long. going, and one day you will make a game, and right? this will and be this the will clue. Be it. <laughs> he, he knew. When, um, that's that's your bridge. You, we, it you, is our bridge. You it's have one, that bridge. One of our many bridges. Yes, you, it's a quality bridge. <laughs> it is. So, it's a wonderful bridge. As far as bridges go, I'd listen in like. Top tier. Top it's a, tier. It's a nice tower, tier bridge. Yes, Tower Bridge is quite lovely, though. London fact. Bridge is a, is a real bridge. It is. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a bridge. Also, in... bears walk on four legs. I know, this, this comes as There's a shock. There's a bridge called London Bridge. Yes, there is actually a bridge called London Bridge. Do you want to have a guess where it is? <laughs> <laughs> assumed it was like a like it would like had a proper name but like folks just called it like the london bridge well see so there's that rumor that someone tried <laughs> to buy what is tower bridge which is the beautiful bridge that's got the big sort of old old school towers and somewhat there's the rumor that someone thought they were buying that but actually they were buying london bridge because it was a, an american who didn't understand obviously um and so that is seen he's like ah, yeah yeah and there you go um i watched a video and it recently turns out to- he totally knew he was buying london bridge yeah. and it's a, it's a whole and the old london bridge was like has been like rebuilt somewhere in the states yeah i can't remember where Your question yeah. is it falling down it, it did at one point yes in history i believe it probably did fall down like so, so this is Tower Bridge. So as you see, London Bridge is falling down. Is showing a picture of Tower Bridge. I see. That is weird. Why are they showing Tower because Bridge? Because that is the iconic bridge of London. Right. But it's not called London Bridge. But it's Bridge. but it's that yeah that is the Tower Bridge right. So the London well this is gonna just the London Bridge. The problem is now the Lon- so this yeah. is the, this is yeah this is the London Bridge. So so the thing <laughs> no about, wonder everyone wants yeah. this one. Exactly. The London so Bridge. the the London wah, Bridge wah. is the only. <laughs> So yeah, the Tower Bridge is the only one that still looks like it did, other yep. than the blue accents. They were painted, I think, for like a Jubilee or something. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I think went fairly recently too. Yeah, right? and then when we, I was we liked one, it all so much, they kept it. I mean, it's a, it's a win. Yeah, it's a nice highlight. Uh, but yeah. all the other bridges, every other bridge other than Tower Bridge, I think, has been rebuilt mm-hmm. at some point. So London Bridge didn't look like this, and it's it's probably one of the more modern bridges mm-hmm. now. But yeah, it's not exactly a sight to behold. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I feel like this is the like expectations versus reality. <laughs> Right. Expectations, <laughs> London Bridge. Reality, London Bridge. Absolutely. Like, that's the bridge we've been singing about. Yeah, we've <laughs> been singing about this bridge that is like, so modern and boring. This is like a, this is like a highway out of Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cleveland actually has some good bridges. <laughs> Cleveland is a good bridge city. I can't, uh, yeah. But I this also say, reminds me of There like, is a London Bridge now in the US somewhere. I forget where the guy was from and where he rebuilt it brick mm-hmm. by brick. Yeah. <laughs> but it exists somewhere, but it's not that pretty. So like, oh, oh look at that. This is about as good as you're going to get. Yeah, L- London at night is, is quite, <laughs> is quite nice. But <laughs> it's not, London not, Bridge has been catfishing us for I, years. I, I, I did love someone at one point um, <coughs> pitched making tower modernizing tower bridge and protecting it and covering it in like glass and it would have this beautiful modern exterior but they would keep the towers inside it's just like rightly so it was rejected yeah right it's yeah. just like it's just like, oh, like one of the few bits of heritage in bits terms of, of bridges preserve it <laughs> preserve must the one tear it bridge. down and preserve it there you go all right, right. Here we go. <laughs> back to back to animatronics golden freddy on night two of fnaf 2 i bet this means that through some way you're able to get golden freddy on night, night two, two. Naf too. I, I I think this is just one of those like ah we got him. Golden Freddy jump freaking secrets. Golden Freddy jump scare. Swimming bird. Every Wednesday for the this is Swimming bird nine forty one. Shop when inspiration hits. Oh, oh man, I gotta watch the whole thing. Food line quality quality grocery. Uh, I told you you guys get so many ads on YouTube here. <laughs> we, we gotta talk about this. I've. We got to finish the FNAF thing, but next episode yes. you're on, I'm going to have you talk about <laughs> the differences between UK YouTube and yes. British YouTube. Absolutely. Or UK YouTube and uh, US YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Robots with lights. Uh, uh, it's Foxy 2.0. Okay, okay. Great. Phone guy. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Has nothing to do with the Is this clickbait? I'm not, see- I'm not seeing Golden <laughs> Freddy on night two. Is there a Golden Freddy jump? Oh, oh, there was a jump scare. That was that was a jump. Oh, there's a jump scare. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I, not uh, you know, overly clear. What night does Golden Freddy appear in night two? Golden Freddy is a hidden fifth animatronic. That nope. This is. Go. Uh, uh, 
It happens most often on night one and rarely on night three, but night two, therefore, is not mentioned there. Okay. You can also try to escape Golden Freddy once you see him, put the camera, yeah, yeah. okay. So maybe he appears well, yeah. sometimes, and that's, I, I, I can't imagine it being much more exciting than, than that. Appears, that's yeah. it, okay. So we did that, we did that, we did that. Uh, Chica's missing eyes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, she, she has a missing beak. She takes away her beak. Chica's missing eyes? Is that just like, I've not Toy really... Chica loses her. What happens to the animatronic's eyes? I've not thought, of, like, thought about this. <laughs> like, the beak is obviously a point of discussion, but this one I don't think I've ever seen. FNAF 1, we see the animatronics in the cameras, but when Bonnie is in the supply closet, or Freddy, the eyes appear to be missing. In FNAF 2, Toy Chica's eyes and beak appear to be missing as soon as she leaves the stage. I mean, sure. yes. Is that it? I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you bottom of the throw, iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it, <laughs> bottom, it is. It is <laughs> bottom of a lot of things at this point. <laughs> yep, the, she has no eyes anymore. They're they're spooky now. It's got but, but then even then, like in that one where she even has her beak, it look uh, the eyes don't look that different. So, she's got the spooky eyes. Got those spooky. She's got those spooky. Well, she has because she yeah, has the toy cheek eyes, and then. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, there, there you go. So yeah, And now so they're gone. Two. Yeah. So there's your difference. Where'd they go? They got spooky. They got spookified. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, I like that we're asking about the eyes and not the beak. <laughs> like, yeah. You yeah, know. The fact she now has like, oh, just the teeth in general though. Like, I know she has teeth with a beak, but that's just weird. Like to <laughs> me, I feel like when you see this, the eyes just roll back in the head or what, you know, become yeah. pin, pin pricks or like, or like this is an LED screen or something that turns off and you just see like yeah. the, the, the base light underneath. Like to me, that's my that hypothesis sense. or like my head cannon about how I would do it. The beak to me is the weirder thing because that feels like it's intrinsic to the, the structure, right? Yeah. Like here, it almost looks like it goes in, but here you have the well, smooth exterior. Look at, but look at the, what's interesting is the teeth. Yep. Because the teeth, like, are, are in, the in the beak. The beak. Uh -huh. But then and when then you go to the that, mouth. they're just in the mouth. So right. it feels like, yeah. Terrible game. That's weird. Zero, zero out of ten. <laughs> Absolute I, garbage. I think you she's could... scarier with the eyes. You think? Yeah. I mean, here. That's so scary. Like, it's like when dogs have human eyes. Mm. That's true. It gets into kind of uncanny valley. Yeah. Kind of like. Without know. the eyes, it's like, that's a cute little, like, kawaii little, you know. Yeah. I well, guess. maybe not that. She's got teeth and stuff, which is kind of scary. So are you, do you do you find yourself attracted to Toy Chica with or without beak, Matt? <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Many people have. I was gonna say him it's all right. the internet. <laughs> it, em, embrace it. It's fine. <laughs> I've been backed into a corner that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a great place in Japan that you can visit. <laughs> Chica's Missing Eyes, German, uh, Sister Location Trailer 2, and Lost FNAF. So we got, uh, are these the last two, actually? Uh, oh, no, on your section. Wait, numbers East, oh, it, Numbers Easter Egg. Is it another one? Is it? Is that another one? I don't know. I thought we, we did that one. We tried this one, remember? Yeah, and then, and then it brought us to It brought us to the 1578. Oh, like, yeah. Easter Eggs. There are, there are numbers you can find, and they give you codes in the game. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess... I mean, there's a lot of different numbers. Easter Like, it's too vague, honestly. Yeah. Like, numbers Easter egg could also be, you know, that the code that you put into the FNAF 3 blocks is yeah. the hex code for purple backwards, you know, exactly. which was purple guy's code. Like, I see that as a numbers Easter egg. Um, there were the Easter eggs that paid off, like the ones in Monty Gator Golf. <laughs> right, yep. The, <laughs> yep, the security breach Easter egg that I hope gets paid off at some point. Where Please. Very clearly, they've laid out something... A series of numbers for us to do something with and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I mean, even the like codes when you type in 1983 into the uh, observation room and you yes. unlock the codes. I, I, like, there's a lot of numbers Easter eggs there. Yeah, rather than a specific one. Yeah, so I don't know what that could be referencing, unfortunately. Sorry. Okay. I can't, and, and it's too vague that if we yeah. search, like, we, we could, could search. Be here for days. <laughs> and I, I have no idea if we're going to get that. Here, yeah. here's sister location numbers Easter egg. This is what. Oh, Population Time Chapter 2. Official this is the official game, game trailer. There you go. Coming to a game. Okay, maintenance vent opened. Okay, let's see. Oh, 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 here we go. This is, um... What's going on? Did they break the game or something just by standing there? 
Why what happened there? What is that? <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's debug. Like, I feel like this is like a debug or the computer doing calculations. Is this an Easter egg? So, but it, yeah, it is titled number Easter egg. It is. So it might be. 433 views. I there mean, you go. This is from Mr. Pinball. Which is why it's at the bottom of the iceberg, because right. nobody's heard of it. Right, no, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if this is an Easter egg or like, hey, you accessed a, a, a glitch you, thing. You broke the game. Okay, here we go. When you get into the Ballora Gallery, hold 1 and 0 for a minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> then click 1. How do people find this? This is the thing that blows my mind. How do you discover that? Yeah, right? How did you figure this out? You know, I'm just going to sit here and hold these two arbitrary keys for a minute and 20 seconds, and then I'm going to click this key. How? The numbers can't be decoded. I think it's because it's the game. I don't think it's meant that's to the, be That's anything. the actual game code. I think this is the actual game code or, like, whatever calculations or numerical. I, I see this. Well, it might, I, if it's in Ballora's gallery, it's probably something to do with Ballora and her movements. Right. Movements or sound values or whatever. I think there is, uh, there think, is a code to this. The zero is... Suggest numbers in the corner, and the numbers may mean something if you read. I I don't think so. Well, it, well, it might. Yeah, uh, it might. I don't think it, this means no, anything. I... All the numbers. See, that's the thing. All the numbers are randomized, and because they're shifting. Yeah. The fact that they're shifting tells me that there it, it is calculations that are being done, whether it's lighting calculations or whatever. Or player I, position. But yeah. Laura's position. Those sort of things. Hundred yeah. percent. I think so. So, but there you go. Numbers Easter egg. Hold one and zero for an inordinate amount of time. You know, I found that if you hit the escape key, you get this weird Easter egg where it exits out of the game. It's very strange. I'm going to put it at the bottom of my iceberg. The escape key Easter egg. There it is. The debug. Uh, okay, oh what else? Goodness. Uh, um, the trailers are the last one. There we go. Oh, to, oh unused, unused section. section of Happiest Day. I have no idea what this is. I'm very curious about this. Unused section. Well, this is the thing is like, unused, you know. Whether we used unused content in theories is always a, a question. It isn't is it? always so, a question. <laughs> so we some, some things sometimes go. And and honestly, the willingness of people to accept unused content in mm. theories comes and goes. It's it's very context. Depends specific. on depends on their specific opinion. Often, well, yeah. <laughs> Happiest day, unused content. I'm assuming it's speculation, maybe or trivia. Okay, and this is speculation. So this mediocre is just theories melodies. are intended to resemble mediocre melodies. Uh, Happiest day. Like Trivia, the from the original mobile port, the games can only be accessed when beating at 5. Music box. Mm. The game's bad when it shares the same music. No. You would think it would be here. You think? Unused section of Happiest Day. Happiest Day Marionette Secret Easter Egg. Oh, it's in green now! Yeah. I love how phones come in like two, three colors. They're like, yeah, oh, we're not going to give you a lot of color. We're just going to give you green. Yeah. Marionette Secret <laughs> Easter Egg. Okay, this is Susie Lou. As okay. evidence right here. Okay, this is Happiest Day. Yeah. I don't think this is it. I think this is just Happiest Day. Currently, it's looking that way. I was gonna say, I think this is just we're just watching the ending, the the good the, ending. The the east the Easter egg that is the Happiest Day. There you go. Dog's ready. Everyone's happy. And the series ends. <laughs> Oh, so and we that's, thought. And that's where it ended. That's where I, he said it ended. People give me a hard time about ending the theories. I'm not the only one. I'm just following, <laughs> following in the footsteps of the creator. That was not it. Okay. No, that is just the mini game. <laughs> Proof the mask from uh, the happiest day. No. Uh, it may not be the mediocre melodies. No, nope, that's not I it. Don't. For those who believe. No. Nope. Unused. Unused. There's an unused section. Oh wait, here. There's an unused section under the happiest day mini game. Oh, it's another, um... Oh, jeez, it's it is another this. Ice. It, it, is. it is the same one, I think, here. Unused. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's an unused area of the Happiest Day minigame. I'll be honest, I myself am not too familiar with the unused section of Happiest Day, so I'm just going to go off what I've been told. Apparently, underneath the map of the Happiest Day minigame, there's a section taken straight from BB's Air Adventure. It's unknown why it's there. Okay. Okay. Huh! So, well, that, and that's probably just a... A coding, coding thing, thing of just like storing it somewhere. Yeah. Like you find like T Post Freddy and security yeah. breach all around the place. Right, exactly. It's just yeah. to store the assets somewhere while he's well, in use. Yeah, that's 
I would assume that that's what it is, especially knowing that it's taken straight from BBZ. Like, yeah, if it was a random thing, yeah. that would be different, but the fact that it's another mini game or an mm. element of another mini game, yeah. They're, they're, all the mini games are just essentially they're mapping on one it out screen, somewhere. Yep, and, and it just, just takes you to a different section. Which makes total sense. Yeah, yeah when, when I programmed video games back in the day, back in the uh, <laughs> the, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to just position locate. Yeah. Last two! So Last two, Matt! Come on! Let's do it! We're nearly there. We're almost there. Sister location trailer two. Trailer two. Uh, There's a big two on that. That's hidden in the sweat. The sweat slay. This is not official. Sister location secret. trailer two. Oh, wait. I have found a secret trailer for now. Sister location two. In the first sister locations extra. Okay, so in the extras menu. The first sure. sister location. So this is an urban legend. I found an Easter egg for FNAF 6, Sister Location 2, while in Sister Location's extra menu. I rushed to get this out. I'm curious what okay. you have created. I love that it's third party. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 50% say this is fake. 40% say this is well edited. 10% say random. Okay. <laughs> this is clearly okay. fake. I mean, 2 million views, though. You can't, can't oh. argue with that. Oh, oh, well, here, oh. Oh. If you, oh. <laughs> if if you get more typing of random things. Yeah, if you know, if you type in, I'm still here backwards. There you go. I'm still here backward, which makes total sense. This is like when I would go around and the Church of in, in New York subway systems and the Church of Scientology would come Oof. up <laughs> and and pitch you their thing, and they're like, "Did you know that if you take the number seven, which is the number of days in the week, and you multiply it by fifty-two, and then you divide and you and you divide that by you know the number of books in the Bible, and then multiply it by two because God's power is infinite." Or it's double the power of man. You get six six six, which is six, I don't know the whatever. Of the beast, yeah. You know they, they come up with this like crazy numerology, and it's like no, 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 no. it's not a thing. There is a there's a <laughs> Matt, numbers mean things, words mean things. Yeah, and no numbers like that you can do anything with. Oh, absolutely. Right. So if you type in I'm still here backwards, and then pitch shift it and slow it down, and also add in a completely new audio <laughs> file. And then take out the original audio and file. And then remove the original <laughs> audio file. And then add, add in a glitch effect and footage that you yourself created in Blender at home. <laughs> and then fuse it all together in Premiere Pro and upload it onto YouTube. You find <laughs> the secret sister location 2 trailer. It's going to blow everyone's mind. <laughs> totally canon. There you go. Absolutely. 100%. Thing. Here we go. Let's, yeah. see, let's see this hidden Easter egg that, that they were able to find. Right. Oh, I mean the green eyes, that's canon. <laughs> She's so, so shiny! shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Sold! Sold! Pre-ordering Sister Location 2 right now. But this was shipped with the game, <laughs> so it's She's like so, a really bought She's them. so shiny. She's so pretty. <laughs> Scott, you forgot your apostrophe, Scott! He's! Oh, oh it's a reference! Oh, oh, stuff is stuff is disappearing. Yeah, wait, so they're spelling out something else. He's so pretty! Oh. So is there a boy? Animatronic as well? Yeah, we're talking about Afton. Like, oh, oh and now it says so petty. <laughs> so petty. <laughs> but if you rearrange this and also add a couple letters, it says this is fake. <laughs> <laughs> this is, there's a secret code here. <laughs> so if you remove all the duplicated letters and add a couple more, you get the words. He, this is fake. Oh. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the oh. eyes again! Be quiet. Be quiet. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> what, what, wait, what is this? Is, is that, that a tambourine? Is that a microphone? <laughs> what, what? What is this object? I think it's supposed to be... <laughs> I love that. I think it's supposed to be a trail off. I don't have to answer it. <laughs> a microphone? What, what, Matt, what, you're, you're, you're a smart guy. What is that? A <laughs> uh, dog collar? <laughs> <laughs> it's for Foxy, clearly. <laughs> what? I can't. It's a lot like the game Portal. <laughs> Get yeah, out of here! With that trickster like it's, design on it. It's clearly. I, I can't even like. It's it's a sound illusion disc. We're currently feeling the effects of a sound illusion oh, disc. Oh gosh, that's what it is. You will do everything I tell you to do. Oh god. Yeah, this is this is official. This is canon. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Uh-oh. 
What is it? And like we wait, snap one, snap two. Yep, yep, yep. You gotta find footage somewhere. And there was Ballora. This is. That was oh that. snap! Sister uh, Location Two. Uh, this is the trailer for yeah. Sister Location Two. Tw so, Sister Location Twenty. Oh my dude, you just got pranked. <laughs> 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 yes. Well done. Yes. Well, well done. done. Good job. Amazing. I like that this is the new Rick Roll, by the way. Yeah. Like, this have you ever in. thought about that? That that. that Meme is now the new Rick Roll as Rick Roll has kind of aged out. Although of... Rick Roll keeps coming back. I mean, he keeps coming back. Surprisingly. Well, oh, that's because he's never going to give you up. No, it's true. Know? So there you go. There you go. Sister Location trailer 2. Oh, I like that that, that made it into the, the, the iceberg here. Yeah. The deep well. And here it is. The final. The ending to the FNAF iceberg. Lost FNAF 1 trailer. Okay. This is it. This is the grand finale. This is what we've been building to for... A year. <laughs> Basically. The mystery of the lost FNAF 1 trailer. FNAF 1 trailer fake. Oh. What? No, more fake trailers. Hope this helps the search. For the lost trailer. <coughs> Hope this helps in the search for the lost FNAF 1 trailer. Part of this is common knowledge, but I think it can help. This is Scott's old Google Plus page. You can see the three unlisted videos. Ah, oh, the days of Google Plus. <laughs> oh, jeez, right? <laughs> and we had to, you had to merge your YouTube channel into your Google Plus, and that yeah. created all sorts of headaches. One of them is described as a gameplay trailer. Okay, Scott. Okay, so Google Plus. Oh, here we go. FNAF World Teaser, FNAF 4 Trailer. Okay. This is just old. Is this official? Uh, okay, Five Nights at Freddy's, Five Nights. Uh, five Nights, is that not the one? Uh, scroll up. I think they were talking about Five Nights at Freddy's gameplay. Oh, this one? Yeah. Five uh, Nights at Freddy's gameplay. Or Five Nights, or Five Nights at Freddy's, okay. They're all gone. Sit and survive gameplay. So this is old videos of his that he was doing. Okay, so here are the videos I found mm. yesterday. These are the first found by... Hmm. Mm. I believe... I believe it. I, you know, <laughs> when it comes to reputable sources of information <laughs> online, someone referring to themselves as Mr. Shitpost. Uh, that is... Yep. <laughs> Don't have to double check my sources on that one. That is a guy who is upstanding and... Gonna deliver me quality yep. information. On it. Okay, so I'm assuming these gameplay video. Okay. Not go. available. Gameplay trailer. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what is this? So there was I'm I'm assuming yeah, this okay. is a there was a lost trailer or maybe an earlier version of the wait, Ooh. Skittles! Skittles were there, they know. They know. <laughs> they know. Wait, where is the Skittles? It was an ad, wasn't it? There we Skittles go. Skittles it. There you go. That was one of them. There's a couple that they've done at this point, but if you even remember my name, that, that name. It's a yeah. reference. Matt, do you know what reference that is? Which oh. game is this? Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> yep, that's the series. <laughs> what installment? Um, three. Oh, so close. Four. So close. Two. So close. <laughs> Sister Location. So close. <laughs> one. So close. <laughs> Security breach? <laughs> FNAF World? So cool. Oh my god. What's <laughs> left? Uh, <laughs> Pizzeria Simulator. <laughs> six. I, I, I would have accepted either Pizzeria Simulator or Six, which is the only FNAF game that you did. No, you didn't say VR. That's VR. true. You didn't say VR, so, you know, or AR. So I'm kind of impressed with myself that I... You did? No, you, you, you named Thank multiple you. games in this series. <laughs> Well, most all of the games in this series. Almost actually. all the games. I'm impressed. Good job. Good job, Matt. Oh, yeah, it's a reference to FNAF 6's ending. Okay, uh, non existent. Okay, what's this? Lost oh. Media. Ooh, Lost okay. Media Wiki. Okay. Non existent early trailer mini horror game. So it, it was an urban legend, I'm assuming. Point and click survival game. Okay, Origin. Uh, on June 14th, 2014, Scott Cawthon uploaded Five Nights at Freddy's trailer. Soon after, a uh, user called Walmeat. Uh, Walmeat. Remember Walmy back in the day? Comments about another trailer years after the original comment was made about another trailer years after it was made July 15th, 2020. Wow, many years later. So this is fairly recent. A Redditor named uh, Salkazia Mech was able to contact Walmeat on Twitter 
said it wasn't on Scott's channel anymore. The trailer featured an endoskeleton that isn't in the final game. A user commented uh, with a picture of the endoskeleton. For a while, people kept searching. The Freddy channel found Wayback Machine link to Scott's old Google Plus. Oh, that's what we just saw. Okay. Yeah. Scott's old Google Plus account. There were three deleted videos. Two of them were later re-uploaded to Scott's channel. Uh, but the third, just called Five Nights, was not. Okay, this was believed to be the lost trailer. It's dead. Okay, debunking. On July 16th, Walmeet made a post on Twitter where he debunked the existence of the trailer. Okay. He said that he was making that comment. He accidentally talked about the current trailer. Okay. In reality, he was talking about the red-eyed endoskeleton image. Well, the regular endoskeleton appeared in the trailer. Uh, while the existence of the trailer has been debunked, it leaves the contents of the Five Nights video a complete mystery. Okay. Ah. So there you go. Mysterious video that no one knows. Oh, man. Something that we could solve. There we go. Maybe. Nap theory. <laughs> there we go. So Try and use our hacking skills that we absolutely have oh, that, to absolutely. get a hold of that video. <laughs> all the best hacking skills. All of the skills. <laughs> and with like that, that no, look. Double checking. Let's, let's, go, sure. let's, go, let's go back to the surface. Okay. There he is. With Oh, that's the red eyes. Oh, and that's the reference oh, to the red eyes. Is, there it is. That's there's what the, he was referencing. There's the endo. The, the endoskeleton. Oh, and we, oh, we ended with that image. Exactly. There nice. we go. It was almost intentional. Almost it planned. <laughs> right? And we go back up to the surface, past the Fuck. dangle, past the hangle, past the open box, past the glitching Bonnie, past summoning Nightmare Foxy. Whatever that all the way guy up, animatronic is. Right, just that hideous, hideous, awful thing. Past all, using all the battery life. Past the Matt's obsession. Uh, past the toxic meter and up through the endoskeleton in the vent system. And we breathe. And I have one last question for Matt, which is, who is the original music designer, the music composer for Five Nights at Freddy's? Top, top of the, oh my God. top of the iceberg. Oh my God. Who is it? Um, we just, like, and we just did it like with Ash a week the other day. ago, we talked about it. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> help, 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 help. <laughs> Scroll up, please. <laughs> Who is it? Leon Riskin. Leon Riskin! <laughs> Lest we forget Leon Riskin. Burn it into your head, Matt. I mean, it's gonna at some point you will be at the pearly gates that's the last thought i'm gonna have before i die i was gonna say <laughs> you, yeah, i was gonna say either last thought you have or at the pearly gates when, when the saint Pasco. peter's there he's he's like okay matt you had a good life you were a good guy but there's one last test waiting that's when i meet leon, leon Riskin. <laughs> is he right it's like who is this man <laughs> lead composer for five nights at freddy and you're like Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And that is how it ends. That is the true ending of Five Nights at Freddy's. Just drop into a, a, the, the basement of a burning pizzeria. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> to live out the rest of I my mean, days. Where you have to relive the analogy this was series. not subtle. Yeah, no. And you have to relive this entire series again. So there you have, ladies and gentlemen. We did we it. We are done. Tom, thank you for joining me here today. No, thank you for having me. Matt, thank you for. Persisting, yeah, <laughs> persisting through all of this. Uh, now, let us know if there's another iceberg that we should talk about. There's a lot of icebergs out there. I know we've been making jokes about a security breach iceberg. I don't know if any exist or if any that are like really worthy of talking about exist. I, who knows? Um, if there is, send it our way. Or who knows? Create it. Nat or John, you've created 15 of these. <laughs> create one for security breach. There's all sorts of stuff you could talk about there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Let us. Right. Tom has t had to dig through all of the cut stuff for so, that one. So much. Yeah. There's there's a lot of good stuff actually that to talk about. I've a consumed a lot. Right. Yeah. That'd be yeah. fun. Uh, the Tetrabit made what like four videos uh, of the whole thing. I was gonna say, so, like, yeah, it's basically the entire Tetrabit gaming series about unused content in there. Exactly. He normally does one, maybe two videos, no, like four or five. Right. He, he kept going. He's like, oh my gosh, this keeps going. <laughs> yeah. um, so security breach, obviously an option for an iceberg that we could talk about. There's a lot of ARG horror stuff that we could talk about, which would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, or just like YouTube I, uh, iceberg. Talking about icebergs has been really fun because uh, it's educational for me. I think it's educational for you guys. You get to share stories and memories and. Whatever. Matt, if you were to do an iceberg, yeah. what iceberg, like, what is what is Matt iceberg? Ooh, what's the Matt iceberg? Yeah, if you're like, I'm gonna, like, this was me guiding you through 75% of this, 80% of this. Hmm. Like, what what's your iceberg? Obscure indie movie. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Or, no, it would be like, um... Real Housewives iceberg. Oh, 
Yes. <laughs> yes, the Real Housewives of Atlanta iceberg. Specifically uh, Atlanta. Yes. Not, not, even the, not even the universe. Just Atlanta specific. The lore of just Atlanta, let me tell you. <laughs> no, it, it goes deep. It, it goes, goes deep. deep. <laughs> Stephanie and I are currently on the Below Deck Ooh. binge. Like the, oh. that, That's what plays I haven't in the background. Gotten there yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Below Deck, solid. We just finished Mediterranean, so Ooh. Stephanie has started on Sailing Ship. Oh, Which, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What are these shows you're talking about? <laughs> you come from a more cultured place, my friend. And... <laughs> Debatable. <Yeah. laughs> anyway. Different. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting this whole series. Go back, rewatch the whole thing, so that way when you're at the Pearly Gates too, you don't forget Leon Riskin's name. Uh, and with that being said, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya! <laughs> oh, you...